Hello, everyone. Welcome back for our brand new edition of Collider Connected. Today, we are talking to the star of the upcoming movie, Love and Monsters, Dylan O'Brien. Dylan, how you doing? It's good to see you again. You too, Perry. I'm well, I'm well. Thanks. How are you? I am. I'm doing pretty well. I mean, I can't, I can't complain too much if I get to sit home sweet home and do interviews with, with a cat on my lap, so it's cool. Scott, you have a cat on your lap right now? He's, he's like leaning off to the side. Out. I can hold it. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm going to make this work. Dylan demands to see Dewey. It happens. <laughs> this is Dewey. He's very oh sleepy. Oh my God, so cute. But he loves that I can get, that I can do uh, all my work, home sweet home right now. Absolutely. You, that's that's like, like a thing. That's like a thing. All oh, like animals right now are like getting really attached to their owners. Oh, it's very, yeah. <laughs> he he def, I think Actually, he was like that before, yeah, to be honest. <laughs> um, so we start, we start at the very, very beginning with this show. And uh, the first thing I want to ask you is, do you remember the thing that first made you say, I need to be an actor? Was it a movie, a performance, an experience, you name it? Uh, weirdly, it was like myself when I was eight in a letter that I wrote myself that my third grade teacher sent to me when I turned 18. It's super weird. So like sort of, I don't know, I'll try to like make this as uh, concise as possible, but uh, I sort of like, you know, I'd never acted before and I was just graduating high school and I, but I had always like made these, was definitely interested in like movies and wanted to go to film school. Um, and, you know, uh, my dad was a camera operator growing up. So like I was always, I definitely, I grew up with like a woven in love for movies and like, it was just, I was a really shy kid and I just think that like I hadn't realized that sort of like acting in a way like was always something that like I wanted to try, but I kind of like loved and respected it so much that I think I just thought of it like, I, well, I can never like, do that, you know, I can screw around, but like, um, and then, yeah, I don't know, in this like kind of weird swirl of a time where the summer I graduated when I because some videos that I like made was lucky enough to be randomly like trying out going on auditions and stuff and I kind of like stayed uh, I made a decision to stay home and go to community college so I could try this too and my parents supported that too thankfully uh, and like I don't know so there was a lot of things that I was then I was also doubting so I was like I've never done this before am I like being stupid you know uh, or lazy or I don't know so as I'm having all these like doubts you know um, I get this letter from myself in the mail, like on my 18th birthday, because that was like an assignment that my third grade teacher, Mr. Campbell, did in New Jersey. Uh, and like, he sent it to me. It ends with, I love Jim Carrey, I want to be an actor. And I was like, whoa, this has like been in me sort of since I was a little kid and I almost didn't like even remember or like realize or, I don't know. Especially because I feel like at the time you first started doing that, YouTube wasn't exactly what it is today. So how did, how did you kind of exactly, like figure out that was the Exactly, it was so much cooler. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, well, you know, I like, look, I didn't have a lot of friends. Like when I started putting those videos out on YouTube, I had just like moved from New Jersey um, to California. And like, I had like, you know, just like all kids go through these transitions. I, you know, I like, it was like a time where I was, having to kind of create these activities for myself a lot of the time. And what I would do is I would make these videos like, cause it was fun. And, and also we had all, like all those, all these things were so accessible. They were just starting to become so accessible, like editing, you know, and like getting a camera that you could then like shoot something on and then edit it. Like um, all these things were just started to become really easy. So it was a cool time. And then like YouTube was like the coolest thing when it came out, it was like a place that you could, all these like little videos that I've always done my whole life, like with my cousins and my friends or whatever, just like fucking around. I all of a sudden I could like put them somewhere and didn't have to be like in the room with the other person watching it. Like what a, what a cool way to like kind of share your creativity and like get feedback from like other people around the world who are also like have the same instinct to do the instinct to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Um, so I just thought that that was like, what a cool, fucking thing like youtube i think now we obviously it's like god it's so uh oversaturated and ingrained in our everyday lives we like take it granted for granted what what it truly was in the beginning which was like this unbelievable like tool of like sharing creativity you know with this random community uh that you were sort of a part of but like almost never really meets you know so much so many inspiring people that i would like watch and learn from too and 
Bo Burnham, I was like obsessed with when I was 14. Like his videos, just like me too, like stacking books and putting a camera on your second and making videos in your bedroom. He was a lot more brilliant. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, just things like that. Like those are so many of the reasons why I got inspired to create. So it was such a cool, yeah, thing, you know. Is any of the behind the scenes stuff stuck with you? I mean, do you, do you have any interest in, you know, getting behind the lens and maybe editing something now? Oh, well, totally. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, uh, I've always wanted to try directing eventually. Like I do think that like, even before, I don't know, when I started acting, like I sort of knew that stuff more than I knew acting outside of just like my instincts, you know, like I think the only way that I was, I was really uh, able to technically understand what was going on. I knew what the size would be. I knew like, um, I could see just like what I knew of what was happening sort of from the technical side of things. So that was the only, that was the thing I leaned on if anything in the beginning. And then I kind of learned how to act along the way or tried to, or still trying, like still, it is. It's an ever learning thing. I don't know. You're always trying to get better. It's kind of fun hearing that perspective, though. I feel like usually it's the opposite, where acting is the craft that's honed first, and then it's slowly right. getting used to the behind the scenes requirements. Yep, I've been winging the acting thing the whole fucking time, and the only th way that I've survived is because, like, I I know what's going on uh, with the camera wise, and I can re and and you know I can really have a dialogue with my director, and I've and I've also been really lucky to always to have had really great directors too. You've worked with, with quite the assortment. I'm gonna to get to that in a minute, but but just back to the YouTube thing really quick. Yeah. Because I might, I might have watched a few videos to prep for this interview right now. Oh, and I, you did post one in 2018. What yes. inspired you to make that one then? And are we gonna see more? Because that, that video is really freaking funny. <laughs> Thank you, thanks, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I made that with my best friend. Uh, it's, it started because he was uh, in like a communications class that he was like graduating. Uh, when he was graduating uh, college, like he, you know, had what, uh, uh, one of his finals was like to shoot like a, um, a video, like some kind of video scene of action. I think it was like technically what it was called. And it could be anything. It could be like, I don't know, bowling league or whatever. Like I think were the examples, but like, so he'd asked me just like for help with it. And we just ended up doing that together, um, you know, and just, you know, we shot it on my phone and yeah, it was so much fun. It was just so, you know, and I, and then I like edited, edited the whole thing and it just became something that we got really into and obsessed with. And, and it was also just like, yeah, it was the first time I had done that since I started doing that, you know, it was so much fun. Uh, you should edit more. There, there, because like, you know, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm overblowing it for a YouTube video, but I feel like there's a sensibility that you can tell someone has as far as the timing of certain comedic edits go. Yeah, and for I don't sure, know, yeah, I, sure. I feel in that. Thanks, I appreciate that. That's really, that, no, that means a lot. Cause yeah, it's, it is, it's a science for sure. I mean it. Uh, That's cool. So now, Thanks. jumping from YouTube videos and a web series to scoring a manager. So that whole story feels like a one in a million shot to me, but then yes. you finally get the manager. And in your mind, is it like, well, I've got a manager, like smooth sailing now, or was it kind of feeling out that process and relationship a little? Well, the relationship with her was immediate. Like my manager, Liz, is like, the, if anyone who meets her, you would like she's the greatest person like on the planet and she's she's sort of she's been like family to me since the beginning and we're we kind of i don't know we had this really amazing uh i think i was like or i like to say that i was like her first uh like client that she like found for herself like uh, you know we kind of both met when we were like um i don't know we both like kind of came up together like she she was just about to be promoted to be like a full-fledged manager um and I was like, I don't know, just graduating high school and she uh, called me like in jazz band. And uh, I remember just being like, oh my God, I think this, I think this is the one. Uh, <laughs> and, do, you, do you two still work together? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is the coolest thing. I love hearing oh, yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, she's my, yeah, 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 absolutely. She's, uh, um, yeah, we will, um, she's ride or die. I mean, we'll, we'll be together forever, of course. Um, yeah, and I went and met her with my mom and she, Explain the deal. She was like, you know, would love to send you on stuff. Uh, like, are you gonna stay in LA? And decided to try it. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. And then Seamolf was like happened, you know, there was this, it seemed like kind of crazy thing too. I don't know. It was like, you know, 
there were things I remember like in the beginning I was getting, I kept getting like crushed on things. First of all, cause it was also my first experience. Like, I don't know, getting, going through the process of auditioning, which is like horrendous. And, um, I had, I had gotten really fortunate like right away, but every rejection is just like such a crush, especially if you get close, like, you know, you know, and, and I remember the first time I experienced that, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I couldn't take it, you know? And, uh, I remember, yeah, like Liz and my mom too were just like, this is going to happen like a lot. It's going to happen more than it won't. And I was like, that can't be like, no way. Um, and I was just, I don't know, in like a very like youthful, uh, and like boundless, like, uh, naivety, I guess. Like I was sort of like just certain that I would get something. Like I was just like, I'm going to like, this is my like goal, I guess, to just like come back from one of those and like have it be a yes, finally. And then the Teen Wolf thing was, I think just like one of the, you know, they were sort of willing to take a chance on me because I don't know, it was like, it wasn't a gigantic thing, you know, uh, until it was. So it was like, it was just kind of this insane, like, I don't know, like how it's such a whirlwind to look back and think that that's like what my little 18 year old self did randomly, like out of nowhere and having never done it before. I, I still, I don't know. It's still just, yeah, it's one of the coolest things that's, that ever happened to me. So what advice would you give to somebody else who is a young up and coming actor who books something like Teen Wolf and isn't ready for the level of fandom that they're about to experience? Because I feel like even years later, now we have more access to this content and social media is bigger than ever. I just feel like people need to be prepared for when that happens. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the other weird thing, definitely. It's definitely different to be, you know, at all in the public eye, or I guess, or whatever, have fans or like have people recognize you nowadays that it was uh, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, God, I like, I had this conversation with like Keith Hudson one time, who's like, you know, uh, like a God to me. And I just think that's, uh, she's like the coolest person too ever. And she was telling, she was telling me about like, she's like, man, like when I was 23, like, you know, cause I was 23 when she was telling me this, and she was like almost famous to just come out, like, you know, just go to these amazing like parties and meet these incredible like people and have these crazy nights and like there were no cameras anywhere and she's like i feel so bad for you now you can't go anywhere with it and i was like yeah i guess i don't know i guess that is you know you don't really know what you're uh missing out on but uh, absolutely it's like it's just completely different um what advice would i give i i, I mean the advice would be that there's nothing that you can do to prepare for like your that like surrealness in your world, you know, unless you're like, I don't know, unless you're a sociopath, that, like, like <laughs> people coming up to you on the street recognizing you is never going to be normal, you know? So like, yeah, but you, but you do get used to it in ways you adjust, like you do with everything, but it's also just always, yeah, it's forever, sh forever shifts your life in at least a small way. During Teen Wolf, the show is, the show is absolutely blowing up, but when that show is getting super big, from someone like me and like my limited perspective, I see, oh, Dylan O'Brien, super successful via Teen Wolf. He can do whatever else he wants. But I know you were pursuing other avenues while that show was going on. Were you getting the opportunities that you want through the success of Teen Wolf? Um, it didn't feel like that at the time. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was weird. It was like, I think the, yeah, I think I, think I definitely still had like, I had, uh, goals to always try to get uh, be able to do something else like in between um, the seasons for Team Wolf. Also, each year, like you know, we we would always wrap the season not knowing if we were coming back too. Like we would never have our pickup before we. So it was sort of like you know, um, I think there was maybe one time where we or the the times where it was like A and B seasons, like where we'd have little breaks in between them that we obviously know that we'd be picking back up at some point, but. Um, I don't know. Those just had that just had to do with my individual goals, and I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think like I think Maze Runner was, um, you know, that was that was like a huge uh, moment for me getting that moment. But again, even that that felt like small. Like nothing really felt like big during all this. Is that, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the show, yeah. like the show, still felt like really intimate and really ours. And it was wild that we'd go to Comic Con and like it would be crazy to see, I guess, I don't know, like how, uh, how the show had just, um, gotten this incredible, like fan base, you know what I mean? Like that was just wild to experience. Uh, 
and then Mazer was sort of the same thing. Like it did, it didn't, it didn't feel like one of the big, you know, things like happening in the industry when it, when we were like auditioning for that, you know, and stuff, and it was coming together, you know. And then it just, I don't know, it just had such a crazy response. It was, um, really cool, you know. Um, Here's kind of a different way of looking at that experience. At what point in your career, or was there any specific project that kind of put everything into perspective for you as far as the trajectory you wanted your career to take? Kind of, you know, putting into focus what, what you want to accomplish and what kind of roles are important to you? You know, there are the things that I sort of grew up on, right? Like these, my two sort of homes that like I, for the most part, knew as my work and like uh, for, for really like the first seven years of my career, you know, uh, until I was like 25 from the time I was 18, you know, so um, there's like that chapter, which is like very distinct. And um, I don't know, I think I'm still like sort of uh, entering like in that new chapter in my career, uh, you know, and, and still even like myself learning, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. I think it just happens with us uh, growing up, you know, and I think like, you know, I think you still do that really primarily throughout your the entirety of your 20s. So, uh, you know, I, mean, I just turned 29. So, you know, I'm, I'm still figuring myself out. And, um, uh, but yeah, definitely like uh, coming into uh, your own in a way that, yeah, definitely feels like you're, you're, I don't know, finally starting to see yourself, finally starting to, you know, understand who you are, the things you care about and uh, the things you want to champion, the things you want to support, the things you want to pursue, you know, the things that, you, that matter to you, uh, you know, whether that be your career, your personal life, like choices that you, uh, you know, need to make, you know, all of a sudden you're not, uh, you're not a kid just like being like, oh, that's down the road, you know, I'll think about that when I get to it, you know, or like, oh, it's so far away, it becomes kind of like now, you know. I think what you were just saying went back to what you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, which is like, this is an industry and this is a craft where you're always growing based on all the experiences you had. So I feel like your answer to that question could change every single step of the way. And it will. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Maze Runner. I love Maze Runner. I love Wes. I think he is hugely talented and I might be wrong, but based on a very brief scan of your IMDb page, I feel like Wes is one of the only first time feature directors you've worked with. So what was it like, what was it like working with him in that respect? And how did you feel, I guess, that fresh pair set of eyes and sensibilities playing a factor in the making of that movie? Yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, Again, it's all kind of wild to see in hindsight because there was like the, you know, the uh, I, I was definitely aware that Wes was uh, really talented. Like I think we we all, he, you know, it's one of those things where I, I think like I remember the first time I ever like talked to him or met him. You know, like uh, I think like the thing we bonded over was like kind of the the things that we were concerned about uh, with like pulling this off. And I think that that even like to, even me being really young, I think that was like a really good sign. Like I remember coming away from that meeting and uh, saying that like I really liked that he, you know, wasn't blasé about like what we were going to have to try to do to accomplish this. Like if anything, the whole meeting, like he was just like, it's going to be fucking nearly impossible. You know? And like, so that, so, and then I think when we, you know, his, his vision and passion for the, um, for the movie was like, you could tell it was really dialed in from the get-go and like he's also a guy who he, just, he never stops working he's always thinking about it he's always he's always he's it's always percolating something you know and he's also got this like really genius artistic visually artistic background that he's just got in his back pocket you know so uh at the same time having like an ex like a really impressive sensibility and just special like that's the only word for it like a really special sensibility for you know um filmmaking you know and, and cinema and like and, and storytelling you know so like having all those things combined i think and his energy you know uh and he was so young you know we were all so young but we we're all like so game and he really led that charge he was such a big piece for led that charge you know and we all trusted him so much and i don't know and then thinking back it's like such a crazy thing like what a wild 
such a cool group of talented people, you know, like I, I will forever like look up to so many of my friends from that group and, and Wes included, you know, and um, I've always, you know, I'll always say it like, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's the next Gilbert, he's a genius, he can do anything, or, you know, that he'd want to. And so it's just a matter of what he wants to do and what he wants to try. I am, I'm a big believer in what you just said. And for that reason, I'm very sensitive about the mask guard movie, but that is a discussion yeah, for another time. <laughs> I, I love but, what, uh, what yeah. I saw of that looks, looked like he had an incredible idea there. Yeah, it looked brilliant. What he was doing was brilliant. And um, it's like a real shame too, because it's sort of just, uh, you know, um, uh, Fox essentially went through a large transition, obviously, like, um, with Disney coming in and uh, sadly that was one of the things on the chopping block and it's it's just sad to see because you don't want to like you know we need new stories we need new you know we can't have everything that isn't like a guarantee built-in success like to the point where we're just regurgitating and remaking and like rebooting mm -hmm. You know, we get we can't have everything be like a fear of risking a lot of money on something new. You know, I just like wholeheartedly believe that going forward in the industry, it's just slowly going away more and more. That was a huge uh, hit. Yeah. So speaking of doing new things, that paves the way to Love and Monsters quite well, because what I love so much about the movie is that there are certain uh, post-apocalyptic pillars that it maintains that I am drawn to and I got to have okay. again. But cool. there are so many unique flares to it that makes it its own film. So what was it about your character and about the whole world overall that you thought was gonna make it stand out from other post-apocalyptic survival movies? Incredible question. And like so ridiculously well said. I'm not gonna be able to follow this <laughs> with the same kind of articulation. Um, I totally like agree with where I feel like you are going to and what you're saying about it, where it is, it is exactly all of that. I could talk for a half an hour about, you know, what drew me to the movie and why I wanted to do it, but absolutely the, you know, the world, um, while having, yes, so many like familiar and like kind of throwback, uh, classic things in it, uh, with, uh, I mean, with both like post-apocalyptic movies, but also like, uh, you know, Hero's Journey type, like classic uh, singular narrative kind of tale thing, right? You know, uh, ordinary, ordinary kid in extraordinary circumstances, you know, mm -hmm. that's just like, uh, those are the classic things about it. At the same time, it's filled, it's completely colored with, you know, all these beautiful and unique characters and voices and like the tone of it, um, you know, is, is really sharp and light and cool and weird and funky, but also like, grounded and honest and um yeah i just think that it's it's so good natured um i i love the creativity with like i always love the kind of balance of it being you know like uh borderline satirical take on the apocalypse but like again just being grounded so throughout that like it is also a believable world but i, I love the creativity with the monsters how they are you know uh genetically mutated from these li living mammals you know and it's and it's we do it to ourselves i love that too it's our fault for being stupid uh with our like nuclear shit uh so relevant uh so fucking real um fortunately um yeah loved everything about it i love you know i've said this a lot but i uh, haven't said it to you uh, i love too that the script uh, you know always read like a pixar like movie to me in a way like definitely like you would expect that to be animation even just like, uh, even just like, uh, like economically, you would think that there's no way anyone would attempt to pull this off live action, and so that was like a cool piece of it too. That you know, doing that, um, yeah. Okay, see that connection. <laughs> also, you you probably know this is coming as a pet lover here, but there's no way I cannot ask you about working with Boy. And like, I don't want to insult you, but Boy comes close to stealing a lot of scenes. Yeah, from you. so I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was there. He's a movie star. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was like, I mean, that was one of the best things I've ever gotten to do, like, you know, for my job. Um, Hero's incredible. Um, Dodge is his double and his stepbrother. 
and uh, <laughs> Zaley is their mom and trainer, and they all like mean so much to me. And uh, I like I was so close with them through that experience. It was like it was like hard to leave, you know. Um, and still talk to them. I'm gonna go visit them sometime, you know, when that can happen again. Uh, I miss them dearly, and it was like such a big part of my experience. You know, so many days were just. You know, I was the only actor, and then it was like Hero was the other actor, and it was us two, and that was our day or week. And the crew was like, you know, such a family. It was just, yeah, I don't know. And uh, it was that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to use Sorry. the to use the scene on the bus as an example. What is what is it like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a dog? Is there nothing there? Is there a marker there? Is an actual dog there for you to have an eyeline? I think it's like it's so funny. I you know they uh, um, Zaley and her team, the dog trainers, you know, like are um, it'll be like Zaley and her her, uh, her right hand girl Jules. They would like basically always both be posted somewhere because they're you know having to give hero direction or like having them look somewhere or do something and they had the funniest like just they would be so focused on what they're doing like they're always crouched in some crazy position and they're doing like the funniest things to try to like get him to uh to do his stuff you know and they would just always crack me up <laughs> so that was like really funny it's just i don't know but the whole job was like a hilarious uh <laughs> Like, I would just, just them um, doing their commands off camera and just, I don't know, this, the, it would just kill me. So that was like, but also it wasn't even hard. It wasn't like hard to me. I just like, I loved that that was happening during the scene. And I would just still try to like, if I'd giggle or whatever, and then I'd just say my line again, or, you know, I don't know. It was just how it was. It was so much fun. It was hilarious. And so fucking amazing watching, watching the dogs do what they do on set. It's incredible. And I've never gotten to like see it like that, you know, so. It's cool how, uh, yeah, uh, how smart they are and how amazing, like, Zaley is with them. Yeah, it's incredible. I'm just endlessly fascinated by the animal wrangler and training job, and I feel like oh, it's, it's something that job. isn't usually talked about a lot. Yeah, it goes so underappreciated, doesn't it? If it feels that way to me. I'm, I'm also hyper-focused on animals at all times. Yeah. The thing about Zaley, too, that was so special was, like, she is, like, first and foremost, it is completely about the dog's like emotional and physical well-being too which i think uh sometimes is uh you know that's the most important thing so she's just like i don't know she's an incredible human being they're incredible dogs and they're like i mean family to me i don't know coolest coolest part of the job arguably before we wind down here i can't not ask you about education of frederick uh, fitzell which the trailer yeah. Drop looks great, but one of the cool. most striking things about that movie to me is the ensemble you get to work with, in particular yes. Mike Monroe, who we've had on the yeah. channel a lot recently. Cool. What was it like working with her? Is there anything about that collaboration that surprised you? Uh, I I love Micah. Like we became really really good friends uh, even before we went to shoot the movie. Um, she's yeah, she's one of my good friends to this day. She'll. Uh, um, she's also just like, we were, we were, I think we, we were mutual. I was a fan of her, uh, before I knew her and I, I was really excited to work with her. Uh, surprised me about the interaction, how easy she makes it look. Um, I mean, there's like, it's, it's, it's seemingly effortless. Uh, you never see her, you know, like, like, uh, having any sort of moment of, like, I need to figure out what I, what's, like, what I'm doing here, you know? Like, it's just effortless. Uh, she's the easiest person to work with. She's also just, like, so funny and so fun and the coolest. Uh, has the coolest taste in shit. Uh, she's, yeah, she's just, like, one of the greatest humans. Um, and, like, a wickedly talented actor. Like, so sick. Something that doesn't surprise me, you've worked with a whole bunch of incredible people, and now you can add Love and Monsters to that group also. To everyone out there, seriously, check it out. It's a good time. October 16th, you don't want to miss it. Dylan, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. It is much appreciated. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, Perry. Good to see you.